We've interviewed a number of experts on the show, people familiar with footage in the possession of the U.S. military, who have said there is tape out there of unidentified flying objects descending from the sky and then disappearing into the ocean. Well, today, that video emerged. The Pentagon has just confirmed that the footage is real. You're seeing it now on your screen. It was taken by the Combat Information Center aboard the USS Omaha on July 15, 2019, off the coast of San Diego. As far as we know, the UFO in question was never recovered. There was no material indicating a crash. More than that, we don't know. Tom Rogan is a Washington Examiner columnist, well-versed in the subject. He joins us tonight. Tom, what do you think we're looking at here? Uh, well, I think we may well be looking at a, a true unknown, which is to say uh, intelligently controlled uh, machinery uh, that is uh, not understood to be in the possession of the United States, China or Russia, uh, which are the most three most advanced uh, countries in terms of um, military uh, aviation. And, and so, you know, the video in and of itself is, is limiting what it can tell us, but I think it speaks to uh, as the Pentagon itself has admitted, uh, this continuing uh, trend of, of truly unexplained things um, coming into the public consciousness more than they have before. If you listen to this with the sound up, you can hear the guys who are monitoring this video in real time right. gasp when it seems to disappear beneath the waves. So this kind of takes the weather balloon off the table or some meteorological phenomenon off the table. I mean, Clearly, we're looking at something that is, as you just put it, being intelligently controlled, and it's going underneath the ocean and then disappearing. I mean, you're, we're sure that this could not be a foreign nation. In control. Yeah, I, I, that is the, uh, yes, and that, that is why you see um, people like Senator Rubio leaning into the subject. Uh, the military, Office of Naval Intelligence, which really leads the military effort researching this, um, there isn't anything that we have top secret information uh, about what China or Russia have or what we have at Area 51 uh, that can do what these things do in terms of the variable performance. And I think specifically relevant to this video, uh, in the coming months and, and years, an area which we will learn more about uh, is the interaction of U.S. Navy submarines, nuclear uh, ballistic missile submarines and attack submarines, um, picking up sonar contact of things moving um, at hundreds of knots under the water. Um, and so there is a undersea dimension to this uh, that the Navy has sort of pushed off to the side as the pilots uh, talk more about their experiences. So, so there's a lot more to come out, I think, is, is the best way to put it. Hundreds of knots underwater. I mean, I think all of us can imagine objects moving at incredible speeds in the air, maybe even approaching right you know, the speed of light, potentially, but hundreds of knots underwater, I don't think most people can even digest that. That's been recorded? Uh, that, that's what I've heard from sources, uh, very good sources, and that the Navy has the data. And one of the big things, Tucker, that I think as we move towards this um, Director of National Intelligence report, uh, and I do know that the various agencies are actually taking that more seriously than people might expect, uh, as is DNI, um, one of the things we're going to find is that over a period of decades, a lot of the data, uh, a lot of the, the measurement of these things um, has been put off as technical aberration uh, or essentially a data malfunction because they didn't want to really admit that something very serious and special is going on. I mean, some of this behavior challenges our understanding of physics, so I, I think this is going to, it's going to change a lot of perceptions. The, tr the truth is that when I came into office, I asked, right? I, I was like, all right, you know, is, is there the lab somewhere where we're keeping the uh, <laughs> alien specimens in spaceship? Uh, and, uh, uh, my, you know, they did a little bit of research and uh, uh, the answer was no. Uh, uh, um, but what what is true, uh, and I'm, I'm actually being serious here, is, is that uh, there are uh, there's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain uh, how they moved, their trajectory. Uh, they, they did not have um, an easily explainable pattern. And so 
you know, I, th I think that we're st uh, people still take seriously trying to investigate and figure out what that is. On the contrary, we know what that is. In this video we are going to look at who they are, what they are, or more accurately what they are not, and finally, and most importantly for the first time we will investigate how they are entering our realm. So, sit tight, as we venture into the world of unknown. We've talked about uh, this uh, fair amount at this point, and the last time we spoke we talked about Congress being briefed on UFOs next month. Uh, and, and whether or not what you're seeing in the air is some kind of technology from an adversary like China. I spoke with the former director of intelligence, John Ratcliffe, back in March on this topic. Here's what Ratcliffe told me. Listen to this. Have unidentified flying objects been seen? Well, sure. We, we have uh, lots of reports about what we call uh, unidentified aerial phenomena. There are a lot more sightings than have been made public. Sometimes we wonder whether or not our adversaries have technologies um, that are a little bit further down the road than we thought or that we realized. Senator, is that what it is? It, what do you think this is, these phenomena that you're seeing? I don't know. We don't know, and that's the problem. And, and let me be clear, I haven't seen anything. I'm going off what our military men and their radars and their eyesight is telling them. And there's multiple highly trained, highly competent people. There's stuff flying in our airspace. We don't know what it is. We need to find out. That's my position on it. Will you find out in, in June with the FBI report? I, I think we'll find out more. Uh, I'm not sure they'll have all the answers. I hope they do. Maybe there's a simple explanation for all this. But, uh, but I think at least we're starting to answer the question. For years, no one was even answering the question because of the stigma about little green men. They are alien species known to us as jinns. They came into being long before the appearance of human on Earth. They were the masters of Earth. Then, our Creator, introduced human to Earth and pushed them aside because of their corrupted behaviors. They have been living with us, but in a different realm. So here are the facts about them so far we know. 1. They were here before us humans and they are still here. 2. Like human, some of them are good and some of them are corrupt. The good ones are minding their own business while the corrupt ones are interfering with us since the beginning of time. 3. What both of them are not doing is helping us to alleviate food shortages, cure diseases or help us with the environment. Now, for the first time, let us take a close look at how they are actually coming in and out of their realm. Strange recurring theme in the UFO phenomenon is water. It's been reported that one in five UFO sightings involve unidentified craft being seen above or under bodies of water. Yeah, a lot of these uh, UFOs have been captured on video, some of them over water. What is that? And because of that, the U.S. Navy, with ships sailing in oceans across the entire world, has become a major source of UFO sightings, with hundreds of reported cases. Today, we're diving deep into murky waters and discussing when a UFO becomes a USO. These craft being observed either coming out of the water, into the water, or traveling through the water. Water seems to play a big role in the common thread of sightings. Iblis throne. So people have been talking about Iblis. Where is he? His throne. The Prophet has reported, you know, in a very sound hadith, which is in the Muslim, reported by Jabir, that Arsh uh, al-Shaytan, Arsh al-Iblis, al al Arsh al-Iblis, al al The throne of Iblis, the throne of Shaytan, this is the master of Shaytan. The master of Shaytan, his throne is on water. Correct? Absolutely. Water does seem to be critical. And it's interesting that, that of course, traditionally, we thought that the Air Force had the lead for this subject and only recently perhaps with the ATIP program and the Nimitz encounters are we learning that the Navy is a big player in all of this and again it brings us back to water. Right. And if you remember the original story that kicked off all of this modern disclosure in the Nimitz story the pilots describe seeing UFOs these you know 45 foot Tic Tacs flying through the air, but they also saw a USO, the size of a 737 underneath the surface of the water, creating a disturbance on the surface, 
and one of the UFOs, these little Tic Tacs, was hovering above the USO. Actually, it is not a USO. It is, rather, a gateway or portal, if you will, to the alien realm. The interface of air to water is being manipulated to open a pathway to get in and out of the alien realm. Let us look at some more instances of this phenomena. One of the new anecdotes to come out of all this recently was uh, David Fravor, Commander David Fravor, who was one of the witnesses of the Tic Tac, uh, was on the Joe Rogan Show. David Fravor tells a story of earlier, pre-Tic Tac days, uh, earlier in his career, a naval ship going to retrieve a disabled torpedo water drone type thing. And as they were approaching uh, this disabled object in the water to retrieve it, a, uh, as he describes it, a dark disc-shaped object emerged from the depths of the ocean. Because it's not a submarine. He's seen submarines before. Once you see a submarine, you, you can't confuse it with something else. And he starts screaming to, through the intercom system to tell him to pull the diver up. And the diver's like a few feet from the water. And all of a sudden, uh, he said the torpedo just got sucked down underwater, and the object just descended back down into the depths. And they never recovered the the torpedoes. Jesus. And when I heard that story, a lot of puzzle pieces started possibly connecting. I looked back and started noticing that, yes, many UFO sightings occur near bodies of water. A light go across the sky. We're actually looking at cases where there's additional data. This is, uh, of course, at 9 o'clock in the evening. So, what we got from a pilot and the flight crew in Puerto Rico, we all had to sign non-disclosure agreement saying that we wouldn't talk about it. And so we got a three minute and 54 second video of an object. Here's the airport where you now see the object coming in. By the way, we actually caught it on radar uh, first. It makes a loop around the airport and it then goes into uh, the water. It hit the water at about 109 miles per hour. And then it pops up out of the water and it then it splits into two identical objects which have different radar signatures. Here, the UAP did not split in two, rather one more joined the previous one coming out of the water gateway. It's also interesting that over the years there have been a number of reports of UFOs emerging from and, and flying back into the ocean. Just as you think you're beginning to get a handle on this phenomenon, there's a new aspect to it. The throne of Iblis, the throne of Shaitan, this is the master of Shaitan. The master of Shaitan, his throne is on water. Where? What water? What ocean? Allahu Ta'ala A'lam. But there are certain indications that could maybe tell us where his throne could be. There's another hadith where it says, Innahu, this is also in, in Muslim, Innahu, Inda Barzakh il Ma. Inda Barzakh il Ma. What's a Barzakh? A Barzakh. It's like a partition, you know, when you have the sweet water and the salty water, you know, whereby the sweet water does not merge with the salty water. That's a barzakh. That's a partition. In this hadith, he says he is on this barzakh. His, ash, his throne is on this barzakh. His throne is on this barzakh, which is, again, somewhere in, 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 a, in an ocean. Could be coming from the ocean. Well, that's one of a number of theories about this. It is very clear from the Islamic scripture as it says, Satan's throne is on the ocean and he sets veil around him. That is why we cannot find their place of habitat or trace them. 1965, starting over Oklahoma, a wave of saucers, flying saucers, is seen by hundreds over four states. And on the first day, 
is actually at night, July 31st, 1965. It all starts with a USO, a fisherman at night in his boat on a lake. He observes a saucer type object with a greenish white light slowly emerge in front of him out of the lake and then zip off at speed. This is, uh, would be the object that a fisherman claims came out of a lake and then took off into the sky. Navy guidelines were issued. So basically, here it is. Here's the whole procedure of if you see this, report it this way. And I love this because it's got at the top, of course, you know, picture of missiles, picture of a ship, picture of a submarine, then picture of a UFO with a military aircraft as if, yeah, that's every bit as real as the other things here. The partition or barrier or Barzik between water and air appears to be the gateway to the alien realm. No wonder there is a special connection between UFO and body of water. The Islamic scriptures are onto something after all. Our next step would be to figure out how are they opening the gateway. Something to look forward to in the future.